How you doing, Matthew? <laughs> I'm a bit nervous. I'm asking. <laughs> nervous? <laughs> Why is that? Because I'm not prepared for this. So okay, so... sorry. I'm not prepared. I was doing the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> so you can even include this. You yeah. know, people like the, 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 what do you call it? The poopers or what do you call it? The... It needs to be natural. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, let the words and of this interview, Father, be able to be anointed by your Spirit. So many people, as they as they hear it, Lord, will be touched. You, you've got a special me message, Lord, for someone in one of these sections of this interview to turn their hearts to you and to actually be safe. In Jesus' name, Amen. So first up, Oscar, how are you doing? It's been a few weeks since Veronica's funeral. How are you doing now? Yeah, well, uh, it's the first of November, so it has been uh, just over a month since her um, funeral. And um, I mean, Matthew, you were at the funeral. Also, we share the uh, the last weeks and days and hours and minutes of Veronica's life here on Earth. And the same spirit that gave us the peace back then not just to me but to 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 the rest of the family is still with us is still in the house today I know that many friends in YouTube and, and Facebook they're wondering you know how is Oscar going we watch um, which watch the, the the funeral service that amazing story of Veronica um, jumping into the hands of Jesus and being sealed for eternity and um, but how is he now and uh, the reality is, and I'm not faking this, the reality is that we are experiencing a peace that surpasses understanding. But it's not just me, I can see it in the children also. Um, just recently the, uh, the um, principal of the school uh, called us just a couple of weeks ago and, and he was amazed how the girls were, were happy, were, uh, were at peace. Um, you wouldn't say that those two girls have actually lost their beloved mother just two weeks before. He and another four teachers of the, the Christian school where our, where our daughters uh, go to, they went to the funeral to support. He actually told us, you know, that they went there to support and they were, they, they left the place uplifted. Uplifted because um, he just gave a different perspective, a much broader perspective that this world is collapsing. The Titanic has already hit the iceberg. The reality is, as my brother-in-law uh, shared with us in, during, the, during the message uh, at the funeral, that if Veronica was still alive, we don't know what is coming ahead of us. And we wouldn't have the 100% assurance that some of the tribulations ahead of us will actually steal from her, her salvation. But now, today, we are certain. We have the, the certainty that she is saved, that she is sealed. She has something there that, uh, from uh, knowing what eternity is for a Christian, we should all envy. Paul did say in Philippians 1 that for the Christian to live is Christ and to die is gain. Well, Veronica was a victorious Christian and she has actually gained. She is only waiting for one thing the crown of righteousness. That's the only thing that she's waiting She's already on transit terminal, you know, ready, ready for takeoff. I'm still preparing my, my, my suitcase for that. So we're doing, we're doing amazing, amazing. I just sounded like Donald Trump, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> we're doing amazing. amazing. <laughs> so some may think, why? As in, why did she die? She was only 42. Why could actually be the most dangerous question for a Christian? A secular-minded person or an atheist might say, oh, well, that's a cop-up, you know, like, oh, you're going to trust God no matter what, you know, you need some explanation. Uh, and the, the thing is that I've got in a little box all my why questions. And that little box is sealed, and it only gets opened to put another why question. And that why question is there in that little box for when the time comes when Jesus will actually reveal the, the many whys that I have, not just because why my, my wife had to die, 
but there are many other whys that are in the picture. And you'll have a thousand years to I got, get the I, I, got a, I got a thousand years, I got eternity, <laughs> to be honest. You know, I think, I think, you know, when we're looking at the thousand years millennium, you know, you think, oh, well, there's a lot of years. But, you know, eternity is there for a reason. I think we are going to have questions of, of different things different and, things, and yeah. learning and increasing our mind. So, what happens with, with the why is a doubtful question. It doubts God. Mm -hmm. It challenges and it questions God. My job as a Christian is to trust my Heavenly Father. I have given my life to the Lord. Years ago, thanks to the ministry of my wife, I was led to the Lord. Thanks to the ministry of your wife? Yes, yes. Veronica's ministry to me wow. uh, actually led me to Christ. How, how did that happen? Well, she was a secular type of girl. I, I met her in a nightclub. Uh, so, uh, Oscar in a nightclub. In a nightclub. In a, in it's, a it's nightclub. It's hard to picture Oscar. <laughs> Um, we got married, we fell in love. I knew right from the beginning that she was the girl. She has only been my girl. Uh, uh, I never had any other girlfriends before her. She has been my one and only, and she will continue to be my one and only. Um, and then, after our first year of marriage, we, we were in Sydney, and we decided to cross the Nalabo Plain, and all of Australia in a pushback. So that's from Sydney to Perth, basically. From Sydney to Perth, we went down to Melbourne, up Barossa Valley, then we crossed the Nalabo Plain, but not through the road, but through the service road. And, and just for those who are in Europe, maybe, that's like going from Spain to Turkey, basically. Uh, yeah, well, all the way to Perth will be from Spain to Moscow. Moscow, I think. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> and, uh, but the problem is that there's no, that there's no house in between, <laughs> it's just a desert. We got stuck with our push bikes and 30 liters of water in them, attached to them, in the middle of the desert. And uh, with snakes, snakes, uh, <laughs> no way to get out. The dragging the push bikes, and um, you know, there's a sign that that goes, uh, "There is no atheist in the trenches." And uh, we heard so many stories of people getting lost in the desert, you know, taking the wrong turn, things like that, getting disoriented. So and you I told actually, me you had reasons to, to pull back earlier, didn't you? Like opportunities to pull back. Earlier. Yeah, but my stubbornness, you know, <laughs> kept on going, kept on going, and um, and we got stuck in there. And if we, uh, and I started praying for the first time in my life, or well, for the first time that I was aware that I was praying to a God in a colloquial way, because I was brought up a Catholic, <laughs> and uh, so in a colloquial way. For the first time, as to uh, a friend, as to a friend, or well, at least, well, it wasn't as to a friend. It was as to get me out of here. If there's somebody there, get me out of here. Uh, the Lord sent an Aboriginal smoking marijuana <laughs> in the middle of the desert with a youth, and uh, he took us out of there. That experience also started calling Veronica back to God. Veronica was was uh, um, was sent was sensing that uh, that. that God was calling her back. She grew up as a Christian, as a Seventh-day Adventist, and um, God was calling her back. When she told me God is calling me back, I said, back where? You know, how is it, how is it calling? She went to church on a Sabbath, on a Saturday, and um, she left at nine. I was a very modern husband. Get go, for sure. And she ch showed up back at home at 5.30 in the, in the evening. And I'm thinking, where did you? <laughs> and she goes at church. She said, "What kind of church is that?" A whole day church. <laughs> a whole day church. I was accustomed to Catholic church. You know, you you go there at twelve. When the priest says you the peace be unto you know, your peace be unto you, you know that from then on it's two minutes and you're out. And so she went to Sabbath school. Then she went to the message. Then she went to lunch. Then she went to youth service in the afternoon. And then they closed Sabbath together. So the next day, the next Sabbath, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm going with her. What kind of people are these? You know, they, they, they've been my wife for, for eight hours, you know, of the day. And she consistently goes each week. It must be good. Exactly. So she got baptized and I got baptized. Oh, praise God. So it was because of her. Hmm. Um, I've got no question that our lives have been given to Him. 
And therefore, whatever comes our way, we praise Him.